Cool. Hello, everyone, and welcome to cool. GG Hello, Leagues. Welcome uh, this is our second GG week. Uh, uh, second official week. Second we are starting week. with uh, second official week. We are our uh, two high school divisions or two high school t two high school teams in our gold division. We have. Give me two seconds. We have. St. Lawrence on the red side, which will be on your right side of the screen. And then we have Dwight D. Eisenhower, which is on the left, which is the blue side. Um, so we'll get started in a little bit. We're just waiting for the players to get in. Um, but for right now, uh, welcome to GG Leagues. If you have not uh, been to the stream before, um, we are a an organization that is trying to get League of Legends into the Chicagoland area. Um, we currently consist of, I believe, roughly 30, 30 to 40 teams, um, both high school and college. Uh, and then we have three college divisions, um, gold and below, platinum and diamond plus. And then I believe there is one or two uh, high school leagues. I believe there is gold and above, and then there is silver and below. So if this is your first time, welcome to the stream. Um, again, in a little bit, we'll get into picks and bands, um, where the two teams will... Uh, you know, figure out their drafts and then go into the game. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Michael, or also known as Italian Bro. Um, I am the president of Elmhurst College Esports. Uh, we actually participate in the Thursday leagues and the Golden Below. Um, so if you guys are interested, um, you know, we have a Discord for GG leagues as well. Um, but you can always, you know, reach out to us there. If any of anyone is interested, um, right now we are waiting for everyone to get ready. So yeah, right now we're just waiting for everyone to get ready. Um, this is one of a couple games that are going on tonight, um, and yeah. But this is the only game that is being streamed from this division for the high schoolers. Um, again, we have streams set up when, uh, Tuesday through Thursday, uh, and then the times depend. So high school usually begins at roughly 6 p.m. Um, and then college, I know Thursday we begin at 9 p.m., and then I'm not sure if Wednesday begins also at 9 or if that's a little bit earlier. Um, so if you're interested and you like what you see, uh, come back to the Discord and check us out and see you know, what's going on the rest of the week, see if you like the league, and, um, you know, see if you would like to join the league. We are always looking for new teams and new players to join. Um, if you're unable to join right now, we have a Discord where... Uh, we have a Discord where we just talk, we hang out, um, yeah, we always look for scrims to see if anyone would like to play with us, uh, or to see if there are any other teams that we can scrim against to get some good competition before going into the weekend. Um, so yeah, um, cool. Uh, again, we are just waiting until we get into picks and bans. Shouldn't be that long, should be the next couple minutes.
Okay, looks like we're into picks and bans. Uh, so I'm pretty sure what we should be seeing from both of these teams is they typically like to play uh, high split push team comps, at least from the top lane. So typically they would have, for example, a Jax or a Yara, or as we see here, a Yorick. Um, these are champions that like to split push, and split pushing is just basically sit in, a top, or sit in a lane and try and shove that lane into the turret faster than it gets shoved out to you and take the turrets before something else happens around the map. Um, so as we see, that's three pretty big split pushers right now, and those are three pretty big picks right now. Yorick has seen some pro play in North America. Uh, Jax has typically played in the jungle, and then Nasus is too punishable to be played in pro play, but it is very strong uh, in uh, not as higher or not as high of a level of play. Um, again, we see Yasuo being picked or Yasuo being banned. This was actually a pick that three of the players um, on St. Lawrence are able to play both their top, both of their tops, and um, one of their AD carries. Um, so I kind of expected that one to go. And then we see a Karthus being banned on the side or from the side. Of St. Lawrence. Um, so the last two picks, pretty pretty strong picks. Um, Karthus and Lucian are very. Uh, high priority picks in solo queue right now. Um, Karthus basically the joke is right now you just press R and you win the game. Um, and then Lucian has a very strong early game that he can use to snowball uh, the rest of the game to his advantage. Um, interesting. We're seeing a Kale. I'm not sure what lane that's going into um, but I'd like to see how they work this out. Kale usually is not seen. Um, her kid is pretty easily punished. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see where this is going. So top here could pick. Interesting. Okay, they're picking Kenny. Not what I expected. Uh, they could have picked Scion. Scion is one of the overpowered tanks right now in the top lane. Basically, he gets to three items and he's unkillable. Um, yeah, no, not what I was expecting. Okay, Volibear, I was expecting that. Um, one of their players, or uh, Deadman, is a very big Volibear player. Um, so that is pretty expected. Uh, and then I'm interested to see what they're going to pick. So they could pick Zin, Graves, and Sejuani. Are all three of them are up. Uh, and I believe, boom. Oh, J4. Okay. J4 and Kale. I'm trying to figure out how these team comps are going to work. So, so far it's looking like St. Lawrence is having a heavier split push. Okay, Aurelia. That was a very strong pick on 9.2. We are on patch 9.3. Uh, she did receive some pretty big nerfs. Oriana. Okay, so basically how this is going to work out is, or how it should work out, um, is... Blue side should be, so Dwight D. Eisenhower should be doing ball delivery. So basically they just, Oriana sticks her ball on J4. He uses his combo, so his EQ ult traps people in, and then Ori ults on top. And that should be the really big combination. Uh, and then KO would just theoretically ult the J4. Um, not sure what St. Lawrence is going for right now. But the Draven ban is not a big surprise. It looked like their AD carry was a pre pretty big Draven player. Uh, Vayne, not surprised either. Uh, one of their, or the person, Fur, uh, currently in top lane, is a pretty big uh, Lucian, Vayne, Kaisa, and Ezreal player. Um, also, that Kaisa or Vayne is their highest win rate champion right now. And then, ooh, Zyra. Syra is not a big surprise either. So they could also, support could also go Zillion right now. Um, that is a pretty big pick because basically J4 runs in, so they have two saves right now. They have Kale ult, and if they pick Zillion, they can have Zillion ult as well. Um, and they have basically two lives, or three lives almost. <coughs> so it's a very survivable team comp. Right now... It's looking pretty interesting. St. Lawrence. Okay, Caitlyn is a very strong pick right now at 9.3. The crit items just got buffed. 
So this basically makes all of the crit 80 carries back to the um, middle of season 8 where crit 80 carries were very strong. Um, you know, you could play them. They were like the staple and then stuff got changed, uh, crit, crit items got changed and then we came to the um, more on hit 80 carries uh, like Kai'Sa. Um, Lucian isn't really on hit but he is a very strong 80 carry as well just because he punishes early and he has earlier item spikes. Um, Alistar would have been a good combination there because then they can also throw in the Ori Ball. Uh, Soraka. So this is not a very tanky team comp from um, Dwight D. Eisenhower. This is very squishy with the exception of J4, so I'm going to be interested how they play these team comps, or team fights. Whereas St. Lawrence has a pretty well-rounded team fight uh, and a team comp. They have Volibear, who's very tanky. Um, and then I'm intrigued to see what the pick of the support. Okay, I'm going to pick a Lulu. Okay, that is also a fair play. Um, so Lulu basically is just going to amplify Caitlyn's damage uh, as well as Kennen's. So this is going to basically, from what I'm predicting is St. Lawrence is probably going to play a very flank heavy or team fight heavy uh, composition where Caitlyn sits from afar. They have Aurelia just kind of throw her ult down and it will slow everyone or everyone that it hits. Volibear, unless you burst him down, which is very difficult, basically just lives forever throughout the entire game, uh, or throughout the entire team fight, and then Kennen can flank around the sides, or he can just flash ult in, and then Lulu can also ult Kennen, and this basically just makes Kennen not die, and it keeps whoever is in the ultimate just kind of stuck there. Um, so I'm very interested to see how these team fights are going to go. Again, it looks like St. Lawrence has a bit of a tankier team comp. Um, Especially if Caitlyn gets ahead, this is going to be pretty interesting uh, because Tristana kind of loses lane phase against Caitlyn. Caitlyn just pushes her in, and it's very difficult for Tristana to last hit due to her E passive, where whenever she auto attacks or kills a minion, it will explode and then do explosive damage which can be difficult or cause difficulties last hitting under turret also her attack speed is relatively low so not only um but soraka will be very interesting in the lane phase this should be a pretty poke heavy comp um, bot lane uh, and if there's anyone in the chat if you feel free to you know say hello you guys can comment um uh, you know, I will be paying attention to chat. Um, just we ask that you be respectful of the players and everything else. Um, remember, you know, this is for fun. It's competitive. Um, well, it's not completely for fun, but it is a competitive environment, and these players are trying uh, their best. So, you know, just keep it nice. Um, no, no flaming too hard. Um, yeah, so I think... Mid lane should be pretty, so early levels, um, Oriana should be able to kind of control the lane and do whatever she wants with Aurelia. Um, and then once it gets to level 6, Aurelia should have kill pressure, um, especially with Volibear. Uh, realistically, they should have, so St. Lawrence, um, which is on red side, should have or on your right side of the screen, they should have better ganks as well. Because um, I think top can get pushed in because it's a range versus range, so that kind of depends. Kale also has a self-heal, um, so that just allows her to just to sustain longer in lane. Um, Caitlyn is shoving in against Tristana, or at least she should be. Uh, and then later levels, Tristana shoves Caitlyn in. Um, early levels, Aurelia should get shoved in, so mid lane should be a gank. So if I was Volibear, um, I would be focusing mid and top, um, and then helping bot get vision, and basically playing around um, the pressure that mid and top are creating in order to invade J4, get pressure in the jungle, take away camps, get early levels. Um, because if J4 gets behind, he has his EQ, but if he's not as tanky, he just gets blown up really quickly. Um, 
Yeah, and then once it gets to level six, team fight should be pretty explosive, uh, depending on who is ahead as well. So we are going to get into game in the next couple of seconds here. All right, game is starting up. And just as a reminder, we are three minutes behind, um, so the game has already started in there, but we will be seeing something a little bit different. Um, yeah. So yes, as I stated before, uh, welcome to GG Leagues. This is the first stream of the week. Uh, this is our second week. Um, we are currently streaming the high school gold and below, or gold league. Um, so yes, these are high school teams that are within the Chicagoland area. Um, and if I remember correctly, St. Lawrence is 0, 1, or they are 0, 0. And then we have... And then we have um, Dwight D. Eisenhower is either zero one or zero zero as well. So this should be a pretty interesting match. Um, again, I believe one of the teams has not played yet, so we will see for the first time how they are going to play and how they're going to match up to each other. Um, hopefully this or this game should be as interesting as last week's, the one that was streamed last week. Um, so yeah, this will be a very action-packed game just based off of the team comps. Um, we do not see Ken and Top very often, so again, I'm not exactly sure of the matchups. All right, and we're getting into game. So yes, as I said earlier, there are five leagues. We have our college, um, Diamond Plus. We have our gold and then the gold below and then we have our college platinum and we have two high school leagues where we have our high school gold and then silver and below so i'm interested to see how these teams start out level one i don't really expect any big invades but it looks like oh they might invade actually they're stacking as five so it looks like right now we have uh, blue side, which is Dwight D. Eisenhower, it looks like they are just beginning to spread out into their five point. Um, and we can see red, so we can see St. Lawrence just putting early vision down so they can get priority. This could be a mistake. Tristana, ah, uh, she should be okay, she still has flash, unless she gets ignited. Yeah, she should be okay here. She still has heal, so she should be fine. Okay, so there we have a flash ignite trade for an Aurelia flash. So if I was J4, I would be paying attention to mid lane to gank early if Aurelia is shoved in. Um, so as of right now, St. Lawrence is 0-1 in the season, and Dwight Eisenhower has yet to play. So this should be a very interesting, action-packed game that we have here. So with the early vision, um, Voli and St. Lawrence are just able to see you know, which side um, or where J4 is starting. So since they see that he's not starting bot side, they have an idea that he's starting top side. So they should be able to pick out where he's pathing. Um, yeah, and then it looks like he's just doing blue to Grom. Um, could go and do. Scuttle, and then just go and take Volibear's red side. Uh, and just force horizontal jungling. Um, okay, so it looks like J4 is going for full clear, and Volibear is doing your more typical um, two camps into, or well, you do uh, your buff and then a camp into Scuttle. Interesting trades going down the mid lane. Okay, we can see that mid currently has a CS lead for Dwight D. Eisenhower. Bot is even. So it's good. Kale into Cannon. I'm interested to see how Kale into Cannon works. Um, it is a double ranged matchup. Or it is range, it's a range, so I'm not really sure 
wins that one. Um, theoretically, Kale should win it. And there you go, big mid gank. Because Aurelia has no flash, really got out, she used her stun perfectly. So she obviously did die, which is very good, but that was a good gank um, from uh, J4 to realize and recognize that Aurelia did not have flash and she was pushed out. Um, now, Volleybear could gank mid here. He is behind in CS. I'm not sure how that happened. Had more free time to farm his camps. Um, okay, looks like Vapor is just gonna base, get his jungle item, and go back to the map. So if you look right now, it looks like Volley is coming in for a gank on mid lane, and Oriana does not have vision on that side of the map. So, okay, unless she moves out, she should be okay here. She has to jam flash. Not used on Aurelia. Okay, she should be okay here. Yep, she is okay. And J4 has backed, got the jungle item. So that was a good gank from. That wasn't a bad gank um, from Bully Bear. Oriana is going to miss about a wave and a half with the CS, which is pretty big. Um, so it means that. That also means that the wave is going to be bouncing back to Aurelia, so they could theoretically um, gank her again and try and force her to flag. Uh, looks like Aurelia's smite is going to be up relatively soon, so if J4 wanted to gank her again, they would have to do it in the next 90 seconds, or else Aurelia will have uh, a pretty easy way to get out of, get out of the gank. Looks like bot is bad. Yeah, bot is actually pretty even right now. This is surprising since Caitlyn should be shoving in Tristana. Uh, especially Caitlyn and Lulu, they can kind of just poke. Um, the main difference is... Um, Soraka heals versus Lulu shield, so they're basically just trying to trade um, mana. Uh, or, yeah, blue side is trying to trade their mana for health on the red side, and red side is just trying to trade, again, mana for health. Uh, the is how they do it. That was a very good sign from Relia. She could have gone in and tried to trade on that. Just get one Q, auto went back off. Um, J4 is invading right now. This is pretty safe because bot lane um, from that side is back right now. And we might see a fight start in bot lane. Another J4 got the smite away. He is a level up, so it could be risky. He is all good in bot lane. Spots like that go, it's not too much happening right now. Mid lane again, it's kind of just a farm fest right now. Oh, Aurelia is really far ahead in CS. That could be very dangerous. Um, just considering that. Okay, Ori does not have all, Aurelia does. Okay, so they're just going to force her out of lane. That was pretty good by... Like the Ice Hall right there. Cannon, that was a good trade, just trading his ult for some health. Nothing, nothing bad about that. J4 is just gonna go back to the jungle. And it looks like Bully Bear is. Oh, just going forward, okay. And top lane. Yeah, top lane is just staying pretty even. Um, looks like Kale has the shove, has more potential to obviously out trade Cannon right now. She almost has her first turret, which is pretty big. Oops. Kale, Kale is the ult. Alright, trade ult for ult, kind of flash it. Ooh, that was interesting. Alright, we see a flash for flash. I think that was maybe a little bit of a panic flash. That was a nice first blood from uh, St. Lawrence. That will put Kennen at least back even, so that way he's not that far behind. Um, and as we can see, the build lead is even. Um, I'm surprised J4 isn't spending more time topside. Um, because his Kale is shoving in, and he could have the potential to go and mess around in Bully Bear's jungle. And doing so, this will cause some 
you know, disruptions with his pathing and his experience, so um, taking jungle camps allows Namor to basically get ahead and get his team ahead for free. Nice trade going down the mid lane, it was pretty simple. Uh, unfortunately, Aurelia took a tower shot, which made that trade pretty qualified, it was pretty even. Um, Aurelia is a level up though. Ori does still have Flash and Ultimate, um, so I assume if Ori did ever push out, okay, we have a nice roam coming down bot lane. Let's see. Okay. Rocker's ult. Okay, if ult, okay, Tristana could. Okay, that was a very good play from from Saint Lawrence. Uh, Basically, Delight, the guys in Holland did not have any wards protecting them from that. They just had the one pink ward in Chai Brush, which spotted it a little bit too late. Um, I'm kind of surprised that they're not going for the dragon here, since they have one extra member on the map. Um, well, they don't know where jungle is, so if they knew where jungle was, then they could have done it earlier. So there could be in trouble here. Okay. Oh, she is good. Okay, we have trade the top lane again. Kind of trading alt for alt, so they could gain top lane if they wanted, because Kale is just getting shoved in the whole lane. Um, yeah. Again, they could. Uh, Saint Lawrence could just go for dragon here because they know that J4 is top and they have their bot lane is back. Oh, well, he's not. Um, so they could just go for dragon, which would be a nice little trade for them. Especially because they have lanes that are, or at least they have mid lane, and mid lane is chunking out that tower right now. Right now, that well, the tower just got uh, its first uh, tower stack downs. So really, is 160 meters up on Oriana free. She is also about 15, so about two waves up. Yeah. Okay. Which will just allow her to get her power spikes earlier and allow her to. Kind of just do more in the mid game um, because Aurelia spikes really hard in the mid game once she gets her Trinity Force. Uh, just allows her to do a lot of damage very quickly uh, and blow people up and take them out of the fight. So I'm expecting J4 to try and look for a gank bot. Um, just kidding, just on his backing. Um, so it looks like bot is trying to get a recall in and they are. Yeah, and then it looks like St. Lawrence is just going to freeze it on a mere bot and then. That is going to force Dwight, the Eyes, and Horace Bot to lose the same amount of CS and experience. Okay, we have another gank in. Let's see if it pays off. It looks like St. Lawrence knows that he's there. Just based on how Relia is moving, she's not playing as aggressive anymore. Yeah, they knew that he was there. Um, and now we see that J4 is headed bot lane. Uh, so bot lane immediately backs off because they knew that there was a gank coming or a potential gank coming. Um, Bear is now ahead of J4 and CS, so that means he is up a level. Um, and this just means more power if it ever comes to the fight, if it ever gets to in the fight. And this is interesting. Um, they do not know where Bully Bear is, so this is kind of risky. They do know that. Uh, St. Lawrence and Botlink did just back though, so this should be relatively free. Um, very interesting. Interesting. Okay, they just gave over Dragon for free. Uh, they could have just finished it and then turned. Um, but overall that was a good play from St. Lawrence. Not only did they get the Dragon. Um, dragon for Flash is kind of expensive, but that is the dragon, which is helping them. Um, they don't just get more pressure for the remainder of the game. Uh, so if they ever do get those, you know, bigger team fight wins where two people go down on blue side or fight the guys in power, and St. Lawrence only gets one person down, it will allow them, or should allow them, to push turret faster with Aurelia, a Volley Bear, and a Caitlyn. Um, just because Caitlyn pushes power so fast. So it looks like Aurelia just kind of has control of the mid lane. I'm surprised that she's not putting up a bigger... We have a 
fight the top. Alright, just a little bit of a trade. Kale is running out of mana here. So it looks like Kale is going to have to back and then walk back to land. And then I believe Volibear is just gonna try and Oh, he's just gonna keep his blue buff. Okay. He's not going to give his blue buff over, blue buff over to Aurelia. Um, and then it looks like Kennen is just slow pushing the wave at the top, and then he's just gonna back. So it looks like Kale will end up losing about a wave, a wave and a half. Um, okay. And then they do know uh, Dwight T. Eisenhower do know where Volibear is, so they should play relatively safe. Um, interested to know how they knew where he was. I assume it was just based off of how long it takes him to do, do camps. Um, yeah, Ori is just getting shoved in pretty relentlessly here. She is CSing pretty decently though. Um, I'm surprised Aurelia hasn't tried to force like a bigger fight just to try and blow something up with Ori. Okay, J4 is giving a little up here to KO, which does make sense. Uh, this is going to allow KO to stay in lane longer um, and just continuously harass Kennen. Kennen knows that she's missing. Let's see. It looks like they're going to try and go on a gank for top lane. Oh, this could be turned though because. Oh, oh. Holy Bear's going to walk over. KO is almost done. Alright, they know that J4 is here. And they're forcing Kennen to play. Kennen does have TP, so this isn't the biggest issue. Especially since Kennen has level 2, so they do, he just could TP back in, force a fight, uh, since Volibear is top. But this is really good from J4, because J4 is just doing drift right now. Uh, but this could also turn really bad if Volibear rotates now and Aurelia rotates up. Looks like Kale is trying to go on some sort of a trade. Going a little bit too deep. Riley is rotating over, so they should be able to get to this first. Very nice. There's the combination that we were talking about earlier. Um, they could fight this. Yeah, Toy Tia's and Hard could fight this, and this could be very good. Yeah, this could be very good to play to Eisenhower. There you go. Okay, that was very good. Uh, they traded their jungler's life. A couple ults, but if they pick up the Aurelia kill here, this would be very good for Dwight to Eisenhower. Yep, okay, that is very good. Kale gets blue buff back, she gets refreshed, she can also just shove in top. Um, potentially, well, turret plating is gone, so hopefully just get the tower down a little bit further. And then look for it. Check back down with bot lane. Bot lane is just on us doing better than Caitlyn. Just on is ahead of CS. It looks like they're ready to fight the top lane. Kale has her ult, so there shouldn't be the biggest issue. Oh man. Kind of made a little bit of a mistake there. Um, so. Tristana is beating Caitlyn right now for towers. Uh, Tr Caitlyn's tower is almost gone, and Tristana's tower is still up. Um, almost full health, I think it's 90% health, 85% health. Um, so that's actually very surprising, uh, just because Caitlyn Lulu is a very impressive lane. Um, Caitlyn can just poke all day. Um, with Lulu, Q, and Lulu Polly, it's just very impressive and very annoying to play against. Um, so it looks like St. Lawrence is currently setting up for Infernal. Uh, Infernal would be very good for them. Um, just again, I mean it would be very good for either team because there's a lot of damage on both sides, but uh, it would be a little bit better for St. Lawrence because um, they have champions where they kind of need to blow somebody up in front of the board. is going right in. This could be... Ooh, that was a flash of light. Okay. Nice from J4. That was played pretty well by... Fortunately, it looks like... Okay, Aurelia's gonna trade. 
Yeah, that was very good for that was a very good trade for Trade St. Lawrence. They will probably get tower here. Um, and it also gave Aurelia three kills, which means she has five hundred gold bounty. Um, they're also still behind in gold, which is interesting. Uh, okay, Kale also just took oh they took the tower. Okay, so Kale also took the Rift, which just means that if she's gonna continue continue to just shove in the tower, uh, just kind of split push the side lanes, this would be very good for her uh, to do that. Continue to put pressure on top lane. Uh, all Dwight Ti's car would need though is they would need to. Yeah, this is that's that's a very good fight for Kayla. She just gets to sit uh, and just kind of get the crowd out of cover. Okay, so on the opposite side of the map, while that trick was going down top lane, um, we did see St. Lawrence pick up the Infernal, which is very good. Not only did they get a tower on Caitlyn, uh, Caitlyn also is down a little bit in CS, but she's, she, well, she had a 450 gold bounty, um, which disappeared due to, I would imagine, uh, the enemy team being, the enemy just on it being just a strong effect. Visual bug, I guess. Um, so, as I was saying, Infernal Drake allows St. Lawrence to have more one shot potential just due to the champions that they have. They have a Kennen, they have an Aurelia. Um, Caitlyn scales really well with it, so they just want to be able to do a lot of damage very quickly so that way the enemy team can't retaliate and try and kill them back. Um, because the way that Dwight Eisenhower, Dwight D. Eisenhower wants to play this game is they want their team fights. They want to play team fights out very slow. Um, basically just sit back, allow Kale ult to heal them back up. And right now this could be very dangerous. This could be turned very quickly. Uh, this could be very good for Blade Gaze in right now. Um, you see him just chasing. Again, looks like. Oop, may have a pause coming in. So it looks like the Aurelia is okay. Or had some technical issues. So, Kennen gets away, they blow Volley Bear's Flash, and, Trista and uh, the Lulu get away. Okay. Um. So that was actually a really good fight. It was a very good turn fight. So this is what I mean by um, they are. This is what I mean by Dwight Diaz and Hard wanting to play fights a little bit slower. Um, if they're allowed to play the fights a little bit slower, they can kite out and they can just kind of wither down the health that. Uh, specifically Volley Bear, but Kennen, Aurelia, Lulu, all of those champions would have. Um, just because, mostly because they have a Soraka, and Soraka, if she is consistently hitting her Qs, which heals her, allows her to heal her and her, her allies more. Um, so, if fights are able to be played slowly, again, Aurelia was not in that fight, so if Aurelia c was in that fight, that could have been a completely different fight. Um, in the favor of St. Lawrence, which would have been very interesting. Um, so yeah, that again, this could be the implications that the Infernal Drake have. Again, having two dragons um, for St. Lawrence just means that they will scale better into the game. The Baron is currently up right now, so they would have the potential to rush Baron quicker with Aurelia, Fully Baron, Caitlyn. Um, Whereas it may take, it will be also be very quick with uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, but it would be a little bit slower due to them not having that um, uh, mountain dragon, which allows them to, again, take down the dragon a little bit, or take down any sort of objective tower dragon barons um, a little bit quicker. So, as we see right now, top, or Dwight D. Eisenhower is ahead by 2k. Uh, 2.3k. I would imagine most, uh, it looks like most of it is all through the top lane. Top lane is 3, 1, and 2, uh, and is 50 CS up on their opponent. Um, so I would imagine most of the gold difference is through top lane just because of how much pressure is being played around top right now. Um, J4, except for the first, you know, 5 10 minutes, has basically just been sitting topside um, to just kind of allow that Kale to 
do her thing to get rolling, um, because once she gets Rage Blade, which will be her next item on this next back, uh, will allow her to dish out even more damage. Um, because once she gets Hail of Blade, or not Hail of Blades, um, once she gets her Rune and um, the Rage Blade going, she will do a ton of damage, especially since Volibear is only building, besides Boots, he is only building health and armor, which is only going to help him against J4 and Tristana, the rest of their damages, um, all AD, which is an interesting decision. Um, he could have gone Stone Plate, or he could have gone um, uh, any other tank item that would have given him both, because uh, I believe, if I'm mis not mistaken, he also gets tanky through his just his kit in general, um, but he also gets tanky through Cinder Hulk, which is his jungle item. Um, so as I see it right now, obviously with Dwight Eisenhower being ahead, uh, this just means that they have the object or they have more pressure on the map. They can force team. Well, they don't want to force team fights, but if they take a team fight, um, they should win it unless something happens where Aurelia just kind of pops off. Um, and she does really well, and she blows up the Tristana or the Kale, especially Kale right now. Um, so if Kale gets killed very early on, this should be a one team fight by St. Lawrence. Um, basically just due to their most f uh, funneled member being dead. Uh, and that's basically where most of their damage is coming from. I mean, Tristana does a lot of damage. Um, but, again, Kale just does a lot more right now, and she has an ultimate that keeps her invulnerable. Um, so it looks like J4 is actually going the kind of one-shot build, where he's just going to do a lot more damage, which is interesting given that this team does not have a tank. Um, this is a new thing by Kenneth. Uh, in my opinion, Kenneth should just back and uh, give up this tower. They really can't contest it at all. Um, they are, like I said, Kenneth. One, he's very low. Two, he has no help. Well, it looks like Blades of Eisenhower is rotating all five members up to the top lane to, I looks like, take the inhibitor tower. Um, in my opinion, it would be very risky to take the inhibitor as well, just because J4 is. Ooh, okay. Ori does a lot of damage. Ori has one and a quarter items. She just chunked Caitlyn. That is impressive. Um, Yes, yeah, so that was that was a very good decision by Zoyti Eisenhower to just back off um, there. Yes, the rift got a little over half the t half of the turret's damage, uh, and that push, which is very good because I do not believe the uh, turrets regenerate health. I believe it's only the inhibitors and the inhibitor turrets and the nexus. Um, so again, this is kind of risky for. Um, St. Lawrence, just because they do not have vision on the map right now, they have one pink ward bot, one pink ward top, and then two wards near bear, one in front and one behind. Uh, and then we see that most, well, it also looks like Dwight Tiazmar has roughly the same amount of vision, but most of their vision is geared toward top side, um, which is more beneficial since I would imagine they're going to try and force Baron very quickly. Uh, you know, if they get the chance to. So this just kind of shows that priority is being placed towards the top side of the map. Um, and if... Ooh, this is very interesting. Uh, they could... Dwight Eisenhower could just rush Baron right now because Caitlyn is bot. Um, they could have done it very quickly or just try and force St. Lawrence to come to them and force the fight and to blow a bunch of stuff. Ooh, in this priority. Okay. So they got Flash out of Morelia and Ult from Morelia. They also got Ult from Moriana. Uh, Moriana's ultimate will be up sooner than Aurelia's is, which is a much bigger factor in team fights. Um, ooh, Caitlyn is an interesting one. Caitlyn is on one and a half items right now, and there's two Tristanos. Just full two items. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so if Caitlyn's given enough time, she should be able to basically just wave clear instantly. Oh, okay. Looks like 
Um, so that is an open inhibitor, which is very dangerous for St. Lawrence, and I have to pay attention to the map movement, so if they send too many people bot lane, they could just have KO and just on a go top lane, take that inhibitor, and then that's a free inhibitor for no reason. Um, but due to their pressure on the map right now, it looks like uh, Dwight the Eisenhower is just rushing straight to track. was a Cloud Drake that was not an Infernal. Um, Cloud Drake is just going to help them get around the map faster. It also helps them uh, give them increased movement speed during fighting, so that is going to help them maneuver around quicker in team fights. Oops, rock a bone or ult there. Uh, St. Lawrence, I think, could have collapsed on that. That could have been a very good team fight uh, in favor of them. So as I stated earlier, Kale has the Rage Blade uh, buy, so she is now sitting on two and a half items. The next item will be Runons. Runons just allows her to get immense amounts of teamfight damage, uh, damage, similar to AD carries, where you kind of just want to get out as much damage as possible. Um, Runons will allow her to get all of that damage uh, out into teamfights and kind of poke the enemy down very quickly. Interesting that Aurelia has not been given any blues. Uh, I understand she doesn't really need them, but she is also mid lane and it will help her shove lanes out consistently and just keep pressure in a lane. Um, so it looks like Aurelia is going the damage version of the amount instead of. Because in my opinion, Aurelia should be going tanky here due to them only having Bully Bear. Um, like I said before, the Kale is just giving the option she is going to so And again, this is the pressure that they. This is the pressure that Kale kind of exudes on. This allows Dwight Yesnar to just rush into. Track to the Baron. Um, this could be a little bit risky because it looks like White Eyes and Power. Ooh, okay. White Eyes and Power got the Baron. Very good. May not be worth it though. We'll see how much Kale does. Kale is trying to attack as fast as possible. Um, okay, that was a 1000 gold shutdown going over to. Thousand gold shutdown going over to I believe Aurelia, uh, and that is very good because that allows Aurelia to get back into the game, um, just put even more damage under the map. Um, that wasn't bad from Dwight the Eisenhower because it gave them the Baron and it allows them to put even more pressure on the map. Uh, unfortunately, they only do have two members, so they have to be very careful. And these are, or it is Orianna and Soraka. If it was Kale that stayed alive with the Baron, um, I think that would have been a lot better. I don't think she needed to see the end of that fight because the Baron was dead by the time she got it. Um, which would have allowed her to just split push bot and get the um, bot tower and potentially the bot inhibitor since Kennedy is getting as well. Um, which would have been a lot more beneficial for them if Kale has this Baron. Um, but it looks like off of that, what could have been, you know, very, almost like the nail in the coffin for St. Lawrence. It actually gave them some life again, um, mostly due to, oh, uh, it was Volibear. Okay, so Volibear did get the 1,000 gold shut down. Um, this just allows them to stay. Wow. Okay, that. Oh, that was kind of funny. Volibear got stuck in the... J4 all, um, but as you can see there, J4 building the very one-shot build, he is very squishy. So after ulting out, he immediately had to flash out, or he would have died. Basically, or actually for free, um, because they wouldn't have had to blow anything to try and kill him. Um, I think Kale should start to go back. Kale also has Runons now, um, so this will allow her to just do a lot more in team fights instead of single target damage. Um, so this is where Kale is at her strongest. And I believe she not just supposed to fall off now. Um, because she doesn't really deal much more damage. It's just she attacks faster and 
it, it comes out quicker. Um, but as the game kind of goes on, and the enemy team builds resistances, they should just start to deal or start to deal with her a lot better. Everybody is just going go in. Very good there. It looks like Kale is just going to blown up right away. Tristana is pushing bot. If Tristana was there, that would have been a lot more beneficial. Aurelia ended up using Flash and Ulti, and then kind of came around for the flank, which ended up being exactly what they needed. Um, basically, this is exactly how you know, St. Lawrence's team comp works. They kind of run at them, or they ult in with Aurelia ult. Aurelia ult ends up slowing them. This stops them from basically being able to get away, which allows Holy Bear to run in flip someone and then with his ultimate it has the lightning which does a lot of AoE damage. It would be similar to Sivir W. And then it allows Kennen to run in and he doesn't have to use flash since he has protobelt, but he has the option to flash ult and protobelt ult in and stun up as many people as possible to do allow his team to do the most damage as possible. Um, so yeah. And as we can see here okay. So Aurelia did go into Starak Cage, which is a very good second item on her. Uh, basically just gives her a shield. Um, and the shield happens uh, basically only when she goes below a certain health. This will basically just allow her to tank more damage, be a lot tankier, and allow her to one-shot people faster, but not allow the enemy team to blow her up as quickly. Um, that was a very good, that was exactly what the way guys are talking about Because uh, again, they utilize the team fight completely, so that is exactly the type of team fight that they need. Um, so we can see here, that's an ace. They could potentially... Okay, so they're going to send Kale top lane to get the top inhibitor, uh, as well as Tristana. Um, so let's go back and watch that. So I really quick just watch what happens. Set up. So we're going to watch top lane. We're going to watch J4 here. So as you can see, they don't have... They, uh, currently St. Lawrence has no vision in their top lane jungle. So they basically have to face check everything. The only person that can really face check safely is J4 or is a bully bear. So they take the vision out here. Dwight D. Eisenhower knows that they're gonna have to come in, or uh, St. Lawrence is gonna have to come in to them to do something. They have an idea of where they're at. And then, and then has his ultimate, but due to the fact that he is blown up so quickly, he isn't able to use it. And then this is just where everything kind of kind of goes boom for, uh, it, it, everything just kind of goes boom for St. Lawrence here. So we can see, this is in, you know, slow-mo. So we have the cannon, she's checking the bush, he doesn't have his Q to check. He gets EQ by J4, since they're sitting, Aurelia ults to her, uh, Oriana ults two people in. Aurelia tries to do as much damage as possible to Soraka ult. Rock Ball is just able to take up and tank up so much damage. Tristana then moves over, and we're able to see the rest of the team fight just kind of pull into Relator. Kale just kind of beats down a bully bear, and then eventually kills Caitlyn. So that was just a perfectly executed team fight in terms of their team comp, um, which is exactly what they did. So back into real time. Uh, we can see now that uh, Dwight T. Eisenhower is above, or is ahead of St. Lawrence by 6k. It is starting to get into those later stages of the game, so gold doesn't matter as much, um, because by now people should be reaching, you know, their higher items. Kale is almost perfect to see She has caught out. Not the best place right now, but she might be able to take Kennen with her. Uh, almost, gets, almost gets Kennen, but Tristana could have gone in for a kill there. So they should at least get bot tower here, uh, which is good. Uh, it's not so good that Kael got killed, uh, which is, yeah, it kind of takes pressure off of St. Lawrence right now, and also gave them one kill. 
or 600 gold back into the game, which is, again, pretty big. Uh, this gets blown up. Um, that was actually very well played by Tristana and uh, everyone on Dwight the Eisenhower. Uh, Tristana got flash flipped. Um, by Volibear. Volibear flipped minion like Burger, or f in this case Tristana like Burger, and um, very very close to getting one shot. I believe if really could have gotten in and knighted her that would have cut the Soraka healing out, or at least a little bit, um, and then they could have killed Tristana, which would have been pretty big for them since Tristana does currently have, as you can see on screen right now, uh, a 450 gold shutdown. Um, this also would have taken pressure off of uh, St. Lawrence even more, which would have allowed them to get a little bit more vision onto the map and potentially try and contest this next dragon and shove the lanes out, get a little bit more pressure off. And this is a, an Infernal, which if St. Lawrence would have gotten it, would have been very good, would have been too this, but since uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower has got red buff. It is, you know, again, very beneficial just because, as you already saw, Oriana can one-shot a Caitlyn. Um, so it's just going to increase that potential to be. Um, again, with getting the Infernal, as long as they can do the Marin Pass, there's nothing really the same as St. Lawrence can do here. Um, they don't have any vision, um, and so you can see here, uh, Dwight Yazenauer basically has vision set here, uh, so they would see if anyone came through that way, just not over uh, the Baron Pit wall. <coughs> so it looks like Dwight Yazenauer is just trying to set up their final siege, or what, what would be their potential final siege. Gale is getting very tanky. Oh, she has Frozen Malice. Uh, Frozen Malice is just going to give her even more of a slow on her abilities. Um, it's also going to make them a little bit tankier as well. So if St. Lawrence get their perfect team fight off, it doesn't mean they're back in the game. Because as we can see now, they are 7k down. Um, and this also means that, as we can see, Kale has 4.5 items, Kenan has 2.5. from Dwight D. Eisenhower did pay off in the end. Um, it ended up giving them the victory. Um, so as we can see here, Kale, Kale just kind of snowballed out of control. She was very strong. Um, she played that game very well. Uh, just was allowed to do, yeah, immense amounts of damage over a 36 minute game. She just, she did like eight, 900 damage per minute. Um, which is very good, and she was just allowed to... They basically funneled all of the resources into Kale and allowed her to do what she needed to do. Um, unfortunately, uh, St. Lawrence was unable to get their Wombo Combo uh, team fight off. They got it off once, and that worked very well for them. It actually stalled the Baron down. Um, their Baron pushed from Dwight D. Eisenhower a little bit. Uh, it ended them, or stopped them from ending the game potentially earlier. But um, I think if St. Lawrence was able to get their team fight off a little bit better, um, their big Wombo Combo team fight, they could have swung the game and potentially come back and won this game. Um, but Dwight D. Eisenhower played this game very well. They were allowed to use their Wombo Combo team fight, where J4 ults in, 
Oriana Ball is on top of them. They ult whoever's in there, and they just kind of leave Kale and Tristana to just kind of free hit away as uh, St. Lawrence is kind of just left to do nothing, really. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that game. Uh, again, this is our first game of the week. Um, yeah, this is our first game of the week. We will be having um, two more games this week, so you can catch us back on GG Leagues. That will be the uh, Diamond Plus, I believe, for college, and then we will have the Gold and or Gold and Below game on Thursday. So if you guys would like to join us, uh, you know, give us a follow, and come watch two more great college games um, later this week. Uh, and then we will ha be having games weekly uh, for the rest of the month at least um, again if you guys would like to join or you guys know of a college or your high school and you guys would like to try and join GG Leagues um, we have a link uh, it is GG Leagues GG Leagues dot com and you can you know talk to us sign up um, we also have a discord if you guys would like um, just so that way you guys can meet some of the players um, you know we're all relatively nice I'm one of the, I'm included um, and on there we talk about, uh, you know, asking for scrim partners, you know, we talk, we kind of joke around. Um, uh, my name is Michael, also known as Italian Bro. Uh, I am the president of Elmhurst College Esports, and we also participate in GG Leagues on the Golden Below League. Um, so yeah, if any of you guys are interested um, in participating in GG Leagues or you are looking at going into or you would like to participate in um, collegiate esports uh, in college obviously um, then you know come by uh, say hello um, yeah and if you know anyone that would like to watch share this twitch um, and yeah thank you very much for watching this will be the end of the stream we will see you guys tomorrow night